Hello, my name is Retroflux, and welcome to the complete guide to optimizing your brews in Potion Craft Simulator. When I started this project, I wasn't expecting this long of a video. It's definitely cut into the work hours for some of the other series that I've got going on right now, but I really wanted to make this guide as comprehensive as possible. So here we are. If you want to read the steps to each of these potions, I'll be submitting all the recipes to the wiki in the coming days. Link in the description. And feel free to leave a comment if you have another recipe that is cheaper, uses less ingredients, or is more optimal in some way. Timestamps for each chapter and potion have been added as well, so feel free to jump around to whatever point in the game you're at. Without further ado, let's start with Chapter 1 recipes and work our way through the Alchemist's Path. I've chosen my two favorite recipes for the Potion of Healing, one which uses only two ingredients, and the other uses basic ingredients only. The first one I chose is the simplest to execute, and is ideal if you're out of enchanted paper to store a healing potion recipe in, because of how fast it can be made. First, you'll want to fully grind a water bloom. Then, fully grind a brown mushroom. Stir until 90% done, and then slow down. Our goal is to finish at about the 95% mark. If you go too far, you'll only get a tier 2 potion, so keep that in mind. Total vendor cost, 40 gold. The second potion is based off only starter ingredients, so it requires more total ingredients, but costs the same gold overall. First, fully grind one water bloom, then fully grind one terraria, and add that along with a second one to the cauldron. Stir until you're on the southeast side of the healing node, matching the line coming out of your potion to the line coming out of the healing node. Use water to align the potion, and you're done. Total vendor cost, 40 gold. Same as the first one. This potion differs from healing by being slightly further away on the x-axis, but higher on the y-axis. That said, the displacement is exactly the same, so we can use some careful grinding to use only basic ingredients and make the most cost-efficient brew. First, fully grind one Firebell. Next, grind one Terraria to about 60% completion. Your guide will be the vertical midpoint of the poison node. You want to go as low as possible on the Terraria path without crossing over that midline of the potion node. Add one additional Terraria and stir. If done correctly, no water will be required. Total vendor cost, 44 gold. If you're low on Terraria and Firebell, you can substitute the first two ingredients with a red mushroom and change the recipe to start with Terraria. This alternative recipe yields a total vendor cost of 50 gold, which is a 14% increase in cost, but it uses one less resource, making it a good option if resources are low and gold is high. There's also a second two ingredient recipe that I'd like to showcase as well, costing a whopping 60 gold which makes it almost 50% more expensive compared to the basic recipe. This potion uses the Dryad Saddle plus Red Mushroom combo, and is good to keep in mind but not in your recipe book, as it's nearly foolproof, but costly, so you shouldn't be using it all the time. To brew, all you have to do is grind both ingredients to completion, and use a trickle of water to finish. With the potion node for Potion of Fire being almost directly west of the start position, Firebells and Lava Roots are the easiest options for this one. Let's cover two Firebell recipes, and then finally I'll show you what I like to call the Lava Root Special. This first recipe is extremely simple, and requires very little mechanical skill, but is costly given the current vendor pricing for northward and westward ingredients. First, grind three Firebells to completion. Next, grind one Wind Bloom to completion. You don't need to grind it to completion for the recipe, you actually don't need to grind it at all. But there is an experience book that you can grab if you grind to completion, so I recommend doing this, at least for the first one of the day. It also makes you feel a bit better for using so many resources on, you know, a basic fire potion. Stir until you're west of the fire node, somewhere between tier 1 and tier 2 potion. Add just a trickle of water at the end to achieve your tier 3 fire potion. Total vendor cost? 84 gold. Now, given the low number of northwest traveling ingredients currently in the game, it's likely a better option to spend more Firebell and save a Wind Bloom in the process. This second recipe, for that reason, uses only Firebells. First, grind two Firebells to completion, adding to the cauldron as you go. Second, grind your third Firebell to the left of its second peak. Your goal will be to just see the edge of the peak. That's your guide to know when you're done grinding. Finally, add the fourth Firebell, making sure to fully grind it as well. You don't need the additional grinding, but it allows you to attempt the potion multiple times, making this one of the most noob-friendly recipes in the game. Total vendor cost, 80 gold, making it cheaper compared to the first recipe. 
but you'll quickly run out of Fireball using this recipe alone. Also note that both of these recipes will have significantly lower costs because of the basic ingredients like Firebell and Windbloom regularly spawning in the garden. Finally, the Lava Root Special. It's the most expensive option of the three that I'm showing off, but it only uses two ingredients, and it preserves your Windbloom as well, making it a personal favorite of mine because of its resource efficiency. First, grind one Lava Root to about 60% completion. This is the most difficult part of the recipe, but the easiest way to line up the grind is to center the X on the line that connects the fire node to the center. After you've lined that up, add a fully ground lava root. Stir, adding water if you overshoot to the west side of the node. Total vendor cost, 92 gold, making it 12 gold more than our cheapest three ingredient recipe. Now I highly recommend attempting this potion multiple times before you save the recipe. Tiny variations in the grind level of the first lava root can make or break the potion but there is a more precise brew that collects the Northern Double XP book instead of the Southern XP book, so try for that if you've got a couple extra lava root lying around. For something so close to the middle though, there's a surprising amount of thought that can be put into this potion. If you're flush with cash, use lava roots at a cost of 92 gold. If you're not low on Firebell, use the Quad Fireball recipe because they grow free in the garden and are cheaper than Windbloom. Only if you're low on lava root and Firebell should you consider the recipe that uses Windbloom, again because of how difficult and costly it is to go north in this game. Remember that you can travel twice as far in the southern direction as north using the same amount of gold, so preserving your northern movement will be a continuing theme once we start talking about anything involving northern movement. Food for thought. Eastern travel is interesting because of the wide array of ingredients at our disposal, so I'll preface this potion's recipes with a note that it's always best to use whatever you have available to you, and be prepared to improvise. Knowing many recipes is best when talking about eastern travel, so I'll do my best to explain variations without getting too deep into the... tangleweeds. Haha, <laughs> it's a potion joke. This first potion uses only base ingredients, making it great for starter recipes. First, add a terraria to the cauldron. No grinding required. Next, add a fully ground water bloom, followed by a partially ground water bloom. Finish the recipe with a fully ground water bloom, stirring and adding water where necessary. Total vendor cost, 60 gold. This is your base recipe, but I can only recommend it for its gold efficiency. Much like the fire potion, it uses a lot of basic ingredients, so overall it becomes costly on your ingredient stockpile if you have to make more than two or three of these. The second recipe takes advantage of tangleweed, which costs a little over twice as much as water bloom, but allows for much more variation while still maintaining a total distance equal to two water bloom. That is, wherever we see two water bloom in a recipe, it's almost always able to be replaced by one tangleweed. Same as before, we start the recipe by adding a terraria to the cauldron, no grinding required. Next, add a water bloom, fully ground. Finally, fully grind a tangleweed and add it to the cauldron. Stir until you pass the frost node and line up the guiding lines. Add water until you have a tier 3 potion. Total vendor cost, 62 gold. For a 2 gold increase, this recipe is simpler and only requires one water bloom instead of three. Now as I mentioned, there's lots of potential variations to this recipe if you want to add more obscure ingredients but these ingredients are the most common in my playthrough, so I've decided to showcase them. Be on the lookout for mushrooms, lumpy beets, ice fruit, and green mushrooms, all of which can be used as similar substitutes with a little bit of imagination. These variations will always increase the total vendor cost though, so be advised that they're not recommended if you're short on cash. For Potion of Light, again we have to remember that northern and western ingredients are the most expensive ingredients for unit distance traveled, so using the least amount of resources is the best option here. The first recipe uses only two ingredients, so it's a good option if you're waiting for a merchant to show up for an ingredient restock. First, fully grind a red mushroom, followed by a fully ground thunder thistle. Total vendor cost, 74 gold. The second recipe is your base ingredient recipe, but it's much more technical than the previous one. More resources are used and it's more precise, but the benefit is that it's less costly. First, grind two firebells, both being ground to the second peak. This lets us gain as much northern distance as possible from our ingredients, and gives a nice buffer when brewing later. Second, add a fully ground wind bloom to the pot. This will line us up with the northwest side of the light node, so we can use water to pull it back into alignment. Now, once you finish this potion, there will be a good amount of stir distance left, so finish stirring to collect the experience node. Total vendor cost, 64 gold, making it 14% less expensive than the previous recipe. Finally, It'd be silly not to mention the Sulfur Shelf recipe, as it directly lines up with the line connecting the light node to the center. With this knowledge in mind, we should be able to add some number of Sulfur Shelves to the cauldron and reach the light node. Spoiler, the answer is two. The recipe is very simple. First, 
Add two fully ground sulfur shelves to the cauldron and stir until you're northwest of the light node. That... that's basically it. After that, add water to pull it back into alignment, and you're done. Total vendor cost, 88 gold, making it the most expensive recipe, but the simplest to execute. And just like that, we've covered recipes for all of chapter 1. Next up is chapter 2, but I'll take a moment to ask you to hit the like and subscribe button if you've enjoyed the recipe so far. We've still got 18 potions to go, so if you're still on the fence about being subscribed, you've got a good amount of time to think about it, but I would greatly appreciate any show of support. Potion of Mana is the first potion where you have to leave the comfort of the Boneyard bubble, but outside of that, the recipe is pretty simple because it lines up almost exactly northeast of the start position. A combination of Wind Bloom and Water Bloom is the simplest recipe, so we'll cover that one first. First, fully grind a Wind Bloom, followed by a fully ground Water Bloom. This tracks us directly northeast from the start, and gives us less remaining distance to consider when finishing this recipe. Next, add one additional Water Bloom, grinding so that the bottom left edge of the X is touching the experience book, like this. Add this water bloom to the cauldron, followed by a fully ground wind bloom. Stir and add water if you're not exactly in line with the center. Total vendor cost, 80 gold. This recipe is good to know because only basic ingredients go into it. However, wind bloom are expensive and can sometimes be in short supply, so it's best to have a couple recipes in mind. The next one uses three ingredients instead of four, and is easier to complete without messing up, but also costs more. Start again with a fully ground wind bloom, followed by a fully ground tangleweed. This will give you most of the horizontal distance you need, but you'll still need a little bit more from the third ingredient that we add. Grind a Shadow Chanterelle just to the peak of its curve, which will cover the remaining horizontal and vertical distance to complete the brew. Finish up with a bit of careful watering, and then you're done. The beauty of this recipe is its simplicity. It's very difficult to mess up. Total vendor cost, 98 gold. The most expensive potion so far. There's one more recipe that I want to showcase, and it's a two ingredient recipe though it relies on a mushroom that isn't as common as the other ingredients that I've shown off. To brew this recipe, fully grind two witch's mushrooms, and, well, that's it. The rest is just stirring and using water to bring it back into alignment. Doesn't get much easier than that. The total vendor cost for this recipe is the same as the first one, sitting at 80 gold, but the witch mushroom only becomes more common in the mid and late game, so it's best to save the first recipe to your book in the early game, and then add this as a secondary page once you have ample witch mushrooms and enchanted paper. Potion of Lightning based off its distance alone? It should be a pretty easy one to do, but there's a graveyard in the way, so the recipe requires more planning than I initially expected. It also begins our path towards much more variation in potion brewing choices, so keep in mind that the best thing to do is learn substitutions for certain ingredients. For example, if you're low on wind bloom, consider a combination of thunder thistle and sulfur shelf, like in this first recipe. First, fully grind a sulfur shelf, which will act as a proxy for a wind bloom and fire bloom in this recipe, saving a resource in the process. Next, fully grind a thunder thistle, which will lead you through the gap in the boneyards to the north. Finally, fully grind a shadow chanterelle. Technically you don't need the full grind, but you can grab some experience books after you're done brewing with this method. Total vendor cost? 120 gold. You pay a lot to use less ingredients here, but if you starve for basic resources, this might save you in a pinch. Not only that, but when you're just starting out, it's really expensive to use firebell and wind bloom just to get up to this recipe even with the enchanted garden spawns helping to cut costs. There's a cheaper basic ingredient recipe that I'd recommend saving until about popularity level 5 or 6, and then you can switch it out for this one in the mid game. The basic ingredient recipe is as follows. First, add one unground fire bell to the cauldron, followed by two fully ground wind bloom. After the second wind bloom is in the pot, this is where I'd recommend deviating from the basic ingredient recipe that we're brewing and adding a non-basic ingredient. You'll be in a very advantageous spot to use the thunder thistle, shadow chanterelle, or even a lumpy beet. Basically anything that saves you from using a fourth wind bloom is recommended. However, since we're brewing this particular recipe with only basic ingredients, we'll need one more ground wind bloom and then a water bloom to get in line. Take note that the horizontal distance of the fire bell and water bloom are exactly the same, just in opposite directions. So keeping track of how many you've used in either direction will tell you how many you need to add to get back to the midline for this recipe. This means you can just add a water bloom here without grinding, and it's guaranteed to get you a level 3 with a bit of water. However, if it's my first lightning potion of the day, I always do a full grind, brew, and then stir to get the extra experience books. Total vendor cost, 108 gold, which is 12 gold less than the first recipe, and again, you can sub out that last wind bloom and water bloom with a lumpy beet, which reduces the cost by 4. 
down to 104 gold. Now the one thing I haven't talked about yet in this list of recipes is anything starting out with going east. The reason for that is simply the scarcity of northwest ingredients. If I can avoid using northwest ingredients to correct my course, I typically do. There's also a bit of an eastern bias with northern ingredients, which leads to what I like to call the northwest travel tax, where correcting your course in the northwestern direction is almost always a waste of gold. That said, there is one recipe that uses the whirlpool mechanic to actually save you a bit of money compared to the first recipe. First, grind Shadow Chanterelle so that you reach the apex of the curve. Slightly to the right is fine as well, but don't go too far. Next, add a fully ground wind bloom into the cauldron and stir. This will bring you onto the edge of the whirlpool. If the whirlpool lights up, you've done these two steps correctly. Finally, add one fully ground silver shelf into the pot. Before stirring, pump the bellows to activate the whirlpool, which will spin your brew clockwise around the whirlpool. As this plays, I'll note that for the same vendor cost, you can sub in a fire bell and wind bloom instead of a sulfur shelf. But I like pumping the bellows like a maniac, and using basic ingredients here requires a lot more precision that I really just can't be bothered with. Once you're on the northwest corner of the whirlpool, stir the cauldron to release your potion from the whirlpool, and travel to the potion node. Add water where necessary, and you're done. Total vendor cost is again 108 gold. With the ingredients currently in the game, 108 seems to be the base vendor price for a lightning potion. You might be able to get away with a recipe that swaps out the Shadow Chanterelle with a Wind Bloom and a Water Bloom to save a couple more gold, but I haven't investigated that yet. Potion of Explosion is yet another northern recipe, so this isn't going to be cheap. But with a whirlpool between the start and the potion node, there's an opportunity for optimization here. Let's change things up and make an ingredient optimized recipe first, and then brew the basic ingredient recipe. Explosion is almost on the same line as the light potion, so we can start with the most optimal solution to get the light potion and go from there. First, grind two fire bells, both being ground to the second peak. This lets us gain as much northern distance as possible from our ingredients, and gives us a nice buffer when brewing later. Second, add a fully ground wind bloom to the pot. This lines us up with the northwest side of the light node. We're a little too low to enter the whirlpool from here, but for now let's keep going and we can look at alternatives in a second. Fully grind a lava root, and then stir the pot just enough to activate the whirlpool, as indicated by it lighting up. Slowly pump the bellows in combination with stirring to pass by the bones, with the main goal being to get as much northern displacement as possible. Now, I'll show a mistake that I made on my first attempt, which was not working with the whirlpool and instead thinking I could just make it past the boneyard without issue. Potion failed? No good. Let's brew it up again, with the same idea in mind, but with a different execution. We'll go a little deeper into the whirlpool this time, and when we get to the top of the whirlpool, we'll alternate between stirring and bellows to effectively erase the southern component of the lava root. With some very careful planning, we can align ourselves with the explosion potion and stir our way out. Add water to correct, and the potion is complete. Total vendor cost, 110 gold. Pretty solid recipe. But let's say you don't have the luxury of non-basic resources. Can we do the same thing with just fire bell and wind bloom? Only one way to find out! We'll start with the same base as before. Two mostly ground fire bells and a fully ground wind bloom. Take note that I'm adding a little bit more grinding to the fire bells in this one to maximize the west distance we get out of them as well as the north. For this recipe, west will be more difficult to travel than north. Next, we'll use a fully ground wind bloom instead of a lava root to enter the pool, and we still have a small amount of remaining movement on our wind bloom, and we want to preserve as much west movement as possible from it. So we'll go pretty far into the whirlpool before activating the bellows. Exit the whirlpool on the west axis and stir until the wind bloom is gone. Add a fully ground fire belt to the pot, then alternate between stirring and water to get the potion done. Total vendor cost, 108 gold, making it only 2 gold cheaper than the other one, but much more technically involved. My advice, keep some lava root handy and save the first recipe. Finally. A recipe that goes south and not north. A mix of terraria and water bloom should make for an inexpensive and compact recipe for this one. Let's try creating a recipe that only uses basic ingredients. I'll note right off the top that, because the node is due south and on the opposite side of a graveyard, it'll take at least one fire bell and one water bloom to get around it, so going west or east at the start is mostly up to personal preference. But starting right is way easier, so we'll do that. Fully grind one water bloom and add it to the cauldron. Next, fully grind three terraria and also add them to the cauldron. Finally, add one fully ground fire bell to counteract the horizontal displacement of the water bloom. This will put you directly north of the potion node, so all that's left is to move due south. Add one final terraria to the pot, fully ground, and stir to complete the potion. Once your potion is done, you can use the remaining travel to collect a couple extra experience books. Total vendor cost, 84 gold, which is a pretty compact recipe in terms of cost, but not very optimal if you're trying to save resources. Basic ingredients are nice, but it's very easy to run out of them if you're using all of them all the time. 
Let's augment the recipe a little bit to use less basic resources, and maybe save some money along the way. First, fully grind a terraria and add it to the cauldron. Next, grind a water bloom to the southmost point of the curve. After that, grind a terraria to about 80%, followed by a fully ground terraria. This should give you enough vertical distance to line up a thorn stick to finish the recipe. Add a fully ground thorn stick to the cauldron, and stir until you're below the potion node. Alternate between water and stirring until you reach a tier 3 potion. Total vendor cost, 84 gold again, though it only uses 4 ingredients instead of 6. Much better overall if you have thorn sticks available to you. The problem is that thorn sticks aren't exactly the most common thing, and tend to be marked up in the shops. So let's try a much more technical recipe and see what we can get away with if we don't have thorn sticks, while still being resource efficient. First, fully grind and stir in one firebell. But retro, why are we going so far west? Great question, it'll become apparent soon. Next, fully grind three terraria and a nice fruit. No stirring in between. What we want is a full path available to us before we start moving. Now, zoom out so that you can see the entire path. We have a couple conditions to meet if we want to get this brood. First, we have to clear the western bone zone, while also not getting caught in the east one of the path. And we also can't afford much wasted south distance here either. With all that in mind, the best option is to use water now and line things up in advance. Slowly add water to the cauldron until the above conditions are satisfied. This is a very precise recipe, so don't overwater, or the entire ingredient list is gone. Once you have everything lined up, stir to the potion node and collect the tier 3. And as always, remember to finish stirring to collect any remaining experience books. Total vendor cost, 92 gold. A little bit more expensive than our thorn stick recipe, but ice fruit is much more common, so I'd save this recipe alongside the thorn stick recipe if you have space. And then you can choose in future brews depending on what you have available. The basic ingredient recipe is basically foolproof, so I'd avoid saving that recipe and just brew it by hand if you run out of ice fruit and thorn sticks. And maybe throw in a goblin shroom instead of a terraria for the basic recipe. That should be able to get you around the boneyard without having to use water bloom. Play around with it. This one's very open to adaptation. For Potion of Sleep, again we're going to start with the basic ingredient build so we can get a feel for what we'll need when we begin to optimize with other ingredients. The potion node is very far to the east and a little bit south, so Terraria and Water Bloom will be the only thing we really need to use. Now for this one, I'll be running through a couple of failed attempts and a suboptimal attempt in the background. The easy way to do this recipe is to just fully grind everything and use 5 Water Bloom and 2 Terraria, for a total vendor cost of 104 gold. This is fine, but it's also a huge strain on resources, and just kind of assumes that there isn't any optimization available with basic ingredients. Well, that's just wrong, because the reason why we need the last Terraria is because we're too far north after the water blooms, and lo and behold, water blooms kind of travel south. What's better is to use a mixture of fully ground and partially ground water bloom to track southward while still moving far enough east to avoid needing to use an additional water bloom. This leads to a very precise recipe that you should definitely save, but the result is that you save 12 gold, bringing the total cost down to 92 gold while also saving you one resource. This is as optimized as you're going to get if you just use basic ingredients. But there's still definitely room for resource consumption improvements if we open ourselves up to brew with other ingredients. Tangleweed is the first one that comes to mind for me, so let's try that one along with some other ingredients. First, sub out the initial terraria with a weird shroom. Grind it as far south and east as possible, and then add it to the pot. Next up are tangleweeds. In terms of vendor cost, these are less efficient than just using two water bloom and travel slightly less distance. However, they have the advantage of providing the most eastern displacement out of all currently available ingredients, beating out both ice fruit and frost sapphires in the process. So if I'm looking to travel east in the most resource efficient manner possible, I always go with tangleweed. Two fully ground tangleweeds are what we want here, so grind them up and add them to the pot. After that, one fully ground wind bloom is all we need to get to our destination. So that's what we'll choose, because it's the cheapest. Stir the pot until you reach the node, adding water where necessary. Total vendor cost, 118 gold, making it 26 gold more over the base ingredient recipe. But you only use 4 ingredients instead of 6, making it much more resource efficient for only a small bump in price. I'll note very quickly that if you do have access to a large number of other mushrooms, brown mushrooms and mushrooms are both very cheap alternatives to the weird shrooms and tangleweed. The recipe that I'm showing in the background of this is two fully ground mushrooms into a fully ground tangleweed plus water bloom. With a little bit of water and careful stirring at the end, this turns out to be a super easy recipe to recreate on the fly and clocks in at a total vendor cost of 106 gold and 4 ingredients. It costs almost exactly the same as the basic ingredient recipe, but saves 2 resources. 
Only problem is that mushrooms are pretty scarce at the start of the game, so I wouldn't recommend saving this recipe until you've caught a good stockpile of mushrooms. Also, if you have extra enchanted paper, this is a good option to include in your book. Or just commit it to memory since it's a pretty basic grinding pattern. Now that we're moving into Chapter 3 of the Alchemist Path, tiny optimizations will be found everywhere, and the paths are only going to get longer from here. This can make the recipes a little overwhelming to think about, so I find it best to use a variant on a common optimization algorithm called Dijkstra's algorithm to solve these long distance paths. To quickly summarize Dijkstra's algorithm, it states that if you can find a set of optimal subpaths within a set of interconnected nodes, then you can reach an optimal solution. It may not be the most optimal solution, and it gets a little complicated when it's applied to this game because, well, there's no nodes along the path. But what we can do is use static ingredient decisions to generate those intermediate nodes, thereby shortening the distance that we have to optimize. Let's start with the Magical Vision one as an example. Before we start the Magical Vision potion, let's look at the end of the recipe. Since the Magical Vision potion is heavily enclosed behind a set of graveyards, the only path that is feasible from an optimization standpoint is through the gap in between them. Assuming this gives us imaginary nodes to aim for when we're designing our solution. Basically a new end node where we assume that everything past it is optimized, allowing us to very loosely mimic a Dijkstra solution slightly. Emphasis on slightly. We also know two other things. First, any unnecessary southern travel will require compensatory northern travel, which is a costly expense. Second, we know from our optimal mana potion recipe that Witch's Mushroom is the most optimal northeast movement in terms of ingredients used. We can then use this to create a set of rough nodes for us to aim for along the travel path, which together should create an optimal solution for the Magical Vision Potion. Let's put these theories to the test and create a couple North First Potions, and then compare it to an efficient South First Potion to see the cost differential. First, fully grind a Witch's Mushroom, which we've determined to be our most optimal northeast ingredient. For cost saving, you can substitute a Wind Bloom and a Water Bloom combination here and achieve similar results. Stir this in, and we'll go ahead and consider this the most optimal start, reducing the amount of distance we still have to consider. Next up, we have to move due east in order to get us between the two graveyards. Tangleweed is our most efficient ingredient for east movement, so let's use that. Fully ground. At this point, we're in the bones. A small amount of south movement is warranted just to stay alive here. It's best to use a cheap Water Bloom here because it tracks southeast first, but still continues our eastern movement. Fully grind that and add it to the pot and stir. At this point, all of our resources used so far have been fully ground, so this recipe is simple to reproduce and item efficient. The final ingredient is a wind bloom, which we'll fully grind as well, just for the experience books afterwards. Combined with careful stirring and water, you can finish the potion using only four ingredients. Total vendor cost, 126 gold. This is a pretty solid price for a four ingredient recipe with that distance to travel. Now let's quickly brew up the same thing, but we'll replace the initial witch mushroom with a wind bloom and water bloom. It's a little safer for travel, and just as easy to remember because you just blindly grind everything 100%. Total vendor cost for this variation, 114 gold. For a total savings of 12 gold, given that two water bloom will track you slightly more distance for less cost over a tangleweed, you could even swap out that part for another 2 gold in savings, and create a basic ingredient only recipe that costs 112 gold but it takes six ingredients, so not super good if you're low on resources. Okay, so that's a good number of recipes for traveling north. What if we start by going south? Well, spoilers, our intuition from before holds true, and we can compare it directly with our north start recipes from before to show that they're more efficient in some way or another. Starting with a resource efficiency goal means that the best option is probably to travel as little south as possible which means green mushroom is probably the best option if you want to conserve resources. We already know that tangleweed is the most efficient for going east, so we'll add that fully ground next. After that, probably a thunder thistle or wind bloom. Wind bloom is significantly cheaper, so let's go with that. A little dodgy to get through those bones, and it looks like we're gonna come up a little short with the witch mushroom. Yep, so no good. Best just to brew this again and try it with the thunder thistle. Same start, green mushroom into tangleweed, then thunder thistle and a witch's mushroom. This is getting really optimized. We're barely clearing the bones in some cases, but you can see that it's now a game of just grinding the right amount to A, actually reach the potion node, B, not thunder thistle our way into the bone zone, and then C, not murder ourselves on that top boneyard while we're traveling along the witch mushroom path. It's doable, but it took me five attempts to get the grinding amounts for each ingredient correct. And as you can see in the final attempt that I made, it's not exactly an easy recipe to produce. Not only that, but the total vendor cost is 158 gold a full 32 gold more than our 4 ingredient north direction one. Turns out that that little bit of south distance that we accrued 
is quite a bit of additional expense, and a lot more headaches to get perfect. This increase makes sense, because even if we were to go with the basic ingredient only potion, we still have to compensate for a terraria wasted, so an additional water bloom is needed. A basic ingredient only recipe would cost 148 gold and 8 ingredients, all the while still being more expensive than our most expensive North Start, 4 ingredient potion that cost 126, and a full 36 gold more than our cheapest recipe that uses 6 ingredients instead of 8. So, moral of the story, think like Dykstra and go North first. Okay, Potion of Bounce is up next, and it tracks mostly north and slightly east. Let's start with basic ingredients, to get a baseline gold and resource cost for this recipe. There is a whirlpool along the way, so let's also try and incorporate that in. We'll start pretty simply with a fully ground wind bloom, fully ground water bloom, and then a fully ground wind bloom. Since the whirlpool and the bounce node are both in the north-northeast direction, two parts north and one part east makes sense to me. Let's stir this together and see where it takes us. Just like that, the whirlpool is active. It's like the devs wanted us to come this way. That said, I'm not happy with this recipe, so let's start it over and optimize just slightly. Grind the first wind bloom fully, then the water bloom so that it aligns with the southern edge of the whirlpool. Add those to the pot followed by a fully ground wind bloom. Same as before. Stir this until you get to the edge of the whirlpool. This is where we can begin optimizing and testing a little. Based on the north distance still remaining, let's rotate our potion over to the guiding line between the whirlpool and the bounce node. This gets us a good amount of free north distance, and we lose none of the east distance that we sacrificed before the whirlpool. After that, we can fully grind one more wind bloom to grab a bit more north distance, followed by a quick water bloom and wind bloom to finish. Note how inefficient this is. So the basic recipe might actually be both the resource and gold inefficient, which would be the first potion so far that has had this problem. A bit of careful stirring and watering gets us to the tier 3 bounce. Total vendor cost, 128 gold, and 6 ingredients. Let's see if we can make a cleaner recipe that uses less ingredients and less gold using non-basic ingredients. First, we'll swap out the wind bloom and water bloom, start with a witch mushroom. Remember that we didn't even use the full grind on the water bloom in the previous recipe, so the witch mushroom actually gets us to almost exactly the same place on the map for just a little more gold. Next, fully ground a wind bloom, again aiming for the whirlpool to give us a bit of free northern distance to save us some gold. Third, we'll save some cash by using a lumpy beet. Note that I accidentally forget to use the end of the wind bloom, so this recipe has some leeway if you mess up. Ride the whirlpool again to the northeast edge before exiting. Wind bloom falls a little short here, so a thunder thistle will have to do. Add a bit of grind to the thunder thistle and mix it into the pot. Alternate between stirring and watering, and the tier 3 bounce potion is yours. Total vendor cost, 148 gold and 4 ingredients. So we save 2 ingredients at the cost of 20 gold. Not bad. One more try. This time going for 100% gold efficiency. I'll note that this recipe is almost pixel perfect, and took me 10 attempts to complete, so follow this recipe exactly if you want to make this potion. It takes 5 ingredients, and it's cheaper than our basic ingredient recipe, so 100% save it in your enchanted book if you can manage to recreate it. Same as before, begin with a fully ground wind bloom, and then a mostly ground water bloom. The goal of this water bloom grind is to get in line with the southernmost tip of the whirlpool, so that the next wind bloom that we use can have maximum efficiency. Add that to the pot, followed by a fully ground wind bloom. Next, take a lumpy beat and grind it so that the endpoint is the exact apex of the loop. If it's too far to the right or left, you won't get enough vertical distance to get to the tier 3, so pull the beat back to your inventory if it goes too far. Add a fully ground wind bloom and prepare to use the bellows. Fire the bellows so that the potion bottle is at the exact top of the whirlpool. You only get one shot at this part, so make sure that you go very slow, and don't go too far. If you go too far, the recipe is ruined and you'll have to start over. Once you reach the top, you'll see that the horizontal portion of the wind bloom at the end of your path will be lined up with the center of the potion bottle. Stir until you reach the potion node, and it should be lined up exactly at the tier 3 level. Mix very slowly at this point. Just like the Whirlpool, you only get one chance at this. Total vendor cost, 124 gold and 5 ingredients. Cheaper than the 128 and 6 needed for the basic ingredient potion recipe that we started with. One more gold optimization can be achieved if you have a Thunder Thistle instead, but I can't take credit for this one. It's straight from the wiki. Same start, grind a Wind Bloom fully, followed by a Water Bloom ground to the top of its highest peak. After that, fully grind one Wind Bloom, one Thunder Thistle, and one Water Bloom. Add all these to the pot and stir until you're at the southern edge of the whirlpool, which you'll ride around until your path is lined up directly over the bounce potion node. Stir the potion to completion, remembering to also stir after and ladle all the way back to the start to collect some extra experience books. Total vendor cost, 116 gold and 5 ingredients. Swapping out that lumpy beet and wind bloom for a thunder thistle and water bloom brings the gold cost down by 8, 
which doesn't sound like much, but our worst recipe costs 148. Saving 32 gold from that number is impressive, especially for a chapter 3 recipe. Now we move on to the Potion of Charm. This one is one of the toughest and most expensive potions in the game, and definitely the most expensive one for Chapter 3. North and West in general are just the most expensive directions to travel in, and Charm is happy to drain your funds as you try and navigate through all those boneyards along the way. We'll create two solutions for this one, the first using basic ingredients only, and the second with all the ingredients at our disposal. We'll start with an augmented version of our basic ingredient only recipe for our Potion of Lightning. Since it's on the way to the Charm Potion, add one unground fireball to the cauldron, followed by two fully ground wind bloom. We'll need one more ground wind bloom at the end of this, and grind that, adding it to the cauldron and then stirring. That's our augmented lightning recipe, and the rest is very simple. Add in wind bloom and fire bloom, alternating whenever you hit the bone zones. The best part about this recipe is that, after the first ingredient, all the other ingredients that follow are fully ground. So it's simple to remember, and you never have to worry about accidentally grinding too much or too little and dying in the bones. Once all your ingredients are in, and your destination point is in the same place as mine, stir the pot until you reach the north side of the charm node. At this point, you'll want to start slowing down, and alternate between water and stirring to achieve the tier 3 potion. Total vendor cost, 180 gold, and 8 ingredients. Sad thing is that this is likely the most gold efficient recipe, as you're pretty restricted to the travel path to the charm node. Let's try subbing in a couple other ingredients to see if we can at least bring down the total number of ingredients used. We'll start again with a lightning recipe as a base, this time our non-basic one. First, fully ground a silver shelf, which will act as a proxy for a wind bloom and fire bloom in this recipe. Next, fully ground a thunder thistle, which will lead you through the gap in the boneyards to the north. Third on the list is shadow chanterelle, which will grind to its northmost point. We need to track slightly west, and not as far north as we did before, so grind a wind bloom to approximately 75% completion and add it to the pot. Let's use a sulfur shelf next, alongside some pretty cheeky water. We want to give ourselves the best chance of clearing those top bones, so we'll water just a little bit to reduce the time that we're in the bones. Finish stirring, being very cognizant of the potion's health. Next, add a wind bloom to track us as far north as possible, stir the pot again, before adding in a lava root. Fully ground the lava root and aim to be just to the left of the top of the charm node. Use water and small stirs to bring it in line, and your potion is complete. Total vendor cost, 258 gold. Yikes. This is where the debate stops for me. The charm potion in general is extremely difficult to get to and optimizations are usually not worth the additional investment. Save the basic ingredient recipe for this one and adapt where necessary. Special ingredient costs are amplified because of the northwest direction, so just remember to keep a stockpile of firebell and wind bloom for your charm potions. And I'd even recommend brewing up a couple every time you have extra ingredients or you have the chance to purchase a lot from the traveling merchants. Next up is Potion of Acid. No major introductions for this one. It's basically just a poison potion, but with extra steps. Let's start with the basic ingredient recipe as usual, and look for improvements from there in terms of ingredient usage and gold efficiency. First, fully grind one firebell to get some western movement out of the gate. Since we're using just basic ingredients, it'll just become combinations of firebell and terraria for the entirety of the trip. With one caveat. We'll try and get as much free distance as we can out of that whirlpool as possible. To this end, we'll grind one more firebell, followed by two terraria, taking note to grind the second of these terraria only to about 75% completion. After this, fully grind a firebell, add it to the pot, and stir until you're at the edge of the whirlpool. The whirlpool gives us a bit of free westward movement, saving us a firebell in the process. Fully grind a terraria, add it to the pot, and stir. I'm not happy with this particular whirlpool. I left it a little too long, so we'll come back to this in a second. Grind firebell to about 50% completion, followed by a series of terraria, shifting west as you move along the terraria's path. Stir through to the end, slowing down, and adding water where necessary. Total vendor cost, 152 gold and 10 ingredients. Our first 10 ingredient recipe so far. I already kind of mentioned that I messed up the whirlpool, so I'll rebrew this recipe, still using only basic ingredients, because I think with the proper grinding and stirring, I can save a terraria along the way. As this iteration plays out, you'll see that I'm scraping past the bone zones a lot more, really trying to be as efficient as possible with the basic ingredients around these tight corners. Now all this work does lead to a 9 ingredient recipe that, if you can recreate it, I highly recommend saving because it's a pain to make. Total vendor cost for this optimized basic ingredient recipe, 140 gold and 9 ingredients. That said, let's optimize a little bit more, because 9 ingredients is still a little bit absurd. Let's start by fully grinding a red mushroom, followed by a thorn stick to its southmost point. This is the most precise part of the recipe because we don't want to waste gold backtracking along the thorn stick path, especially because we just barely make it to the whirlpool with this set of ingredients. Grind a second thorn stick again to its southernmost point. 
We'll then add that to the pot and swirl around the whirlpool until the end point of the thorn stick fits our path. Stir all the way out and into the top of the bones. Add a fire bell, fully ground, followed by a brown mushroom, also fully ground. Finally, add a fully ground terraria and begin stirring. At the end of the fire bell path, add a bit of water, keeping an eye on the end of the created path. Make sure it never goes past the vertical midline of the potion bottle, otherwise the potion just won't work without adding more resources. Once you're comfortable with the clearance you have for the brown mushroom part of the path, stir the cauldron and use water at the end to line up the path with the potion node. Take your time, it's very easy to mess this part up. Total vendor cost for this recipe, 158 gold and 6 ingredients. For 18 extra gold spent, I would recommend that either this recipe or the next one we'll cover to be saved alongside the basic ingredient recipe that we just finished. Thorn sticks, red mushrooms, and brown mushrooms are pretty common, so it's unlikely you'll run out of these ingredients, making it a solid recipe option. It's also worth saving into your recipe book, just because of its technical complexity, if for no other reason. Let's deviate a little bit, and see if going below the final bone zone is better than going over it. We'll start the same as before, because that red mushroom into thorn stick is just a super clean setup to get to that whirlpool. Add those into the pot, as usual. This is where we're going to change the recipe a little bit. Fully ground a brown mushroom instead of a thorn stick, and add that to the pot. Now we'll want to stir to the edge of the whirlpool, then swirl until the brown mushroom clears the boneyards. Since you're traveling along a curve along that edge of the boneyard, it's best to err on the side of caution with this part of the recipe, and whirl a little farther in the whirlpool if you think you won't make it around the curve. Stir to the end of your path to make sure that you've cleared the eastern bone zone before continuing. Next up is a fully ground terraria, followed by a fully ground red mushroom, and another fully ground terraria. Take note that this potion could do with a little bit more west movement, we're just barely going to make it to the potion node with this set of ingredients. Which is great for efficiency, not so great for reproducibility. That said, the vendor cost for this recipe is 156 gold, making it the most gold efficient recipe to reach the acid node, and it uses the same number of ingredients as the super technical potion we just brewed. If you find yourself consistently low on thorn sticks, I'd save this one over the other technical recipe, but all three of the potions discussed are great candidates for the recipe book. Our final chapter 3 potion is Potion of Berserker, and outside of the hallucination potion at the end of chapter 4, it's the final potion until chapter 5 to travel north. It's also our second to last potion to travel any negligible amount west, with the only other one being libido. Let's start with a basic ingredient only potion, as usual. We'll follow a similar path as if we were crafting a fire potion, and then path northwest from there. First, we'll fully grind three fire bells to get as much west distance as possible. After that, we'll do a combination of mostly ground wind bloom and fire bells in an alternating pattern. Our goal is to navigate through the bones while gaining as much net northwest distance as possible. Some of you might be asking why I'm trying so hard to get through this gap in particular, and it really comes down to a discussion on optimizations. If we tried to enter from the top or even the side, both would require us to sacrifice some amount of distance, which translates to a lost amount of gold and overall a less efficient recipe. So although we aren't scraping every little bit of distance we can out of these basic ingredients, in the long run it's still cheaper to take this bottom path. In total, we'll be using 9 ingredients for this recipe, with those 9 being comprised of 5 fire bell and 4 wind bloom. Surprisingly, this one lined up extremely well, but take note that there's still a lot of wasted northern distance with this recipe. This means, if we have the option, it's better to travel west instead of north, since we now know that we'll have a surplus at the end. Total vendor cost for this recipe, 196 gold and 9 ingredients. Definitely a good option, but definitely room for improvement once we stop limiting ourselves to just basic ingredients. Let's follow a similar path, but we'll use mid-game ingredients in conjunction with the basic. To start off, we'll swap out those fire bells with two fully ground red mushrooms. This gets us past the fire node and into a similar position as the initial round of fire bells from the last recipe. To swap to the red mushrooms costed us an additional 18 gold at vendor price, but saves us an ingredient, so I'm okay with it. After the red mushrooms, our only option is a wind bloom, so that's up next. After the wind bloom, we throw a third red mushroom, almost fully ground, aiming ourselves just a little off center from that triple experience book. Add this to the pot and stir to make sure you make it this far without issue. Next up is a fully ground wind bloom, which picks up that tier 3 experience book along the way. We're more or less in line with our previous attempt now, so let's mimic the original recipe a bit. Add a fire bell to the potion, grinding to the northern peak. From here, we'll add a thunder thistle and. hmm, a little too low. One more wind bloom into the cauldron, fully ground. Add water and stir to achieve the tier 3, then follow through to pick up any stray experience books. My map is empty, but there's usually quite a few in here, so it's always best to try and collect as many as you can. Total vendor cost, 242 gold and 8 ingredients. Is the 46 gold increase worth the savings of one fire bell? Likely not, but it's worth keeping in your recipe book for times that you have a lot of mushrooms and not a lot of basic ingredients. Now I'd still like to investigate that top path a little bit, so let's go there next. 
My theory from before was that the extra north distance that we have to travel will make the price and the number of ingredients go up. But there is a whirlpool there, so there is hope for this path. We'll start with two sulfur shelves, and that gets us pretty close to the whirlpool for the least amount of ingredients used. Add a wind bloom after that, fully ground, and then begin stirring the pot until you get to the edge of the whirlpool. Now, because of how close those bones on the left are to the whirlpool, you'll have to tuck in a little further than usual. Use the bellows to get past the bones, and once you're past you'll be good to stir out with the end of the wind bloom's path. We're now lined up almost perfectly horizontal with the explosion potion, which is pretty neat, but that's not our goal, so let's move on. Add a fully ground sulfur shelf to the pot to get us up to the start of that rather precarious path between the bones. Next up is a wind bloom, ground to the westmost edge of its path. This clears us over the top of the bones, giving way to a red mushroom fully ground, Stir the cauldron to make sure that you get through all the mess unharmed, and then we'll reassess. Looks like we'll be in line for a cheap terraria finish, so we'll grind that fully and add it to the brew. While this is happening, I'll mention that the terraria and wind bloom more or less cancel each other out in this recipe. That's our opportunity cost for going too far north, and having to track further south afterwards. A bloodthorn might have been useful here, but they're also the most expensive ingredient outside of crystals, so I tend not to even keep them in stock. Total vendor cost for this recipe? 230 gold and 7 ingredients. Wait, what? It's actually cheaper to go over the top than through the bottom? Well, yeah, sort of. I showed the other recipe first and led you down the rabbit hole to offer the counter argument for the northwest. There's very few good options for traveling northwest, so you tend to move along unoptimized paths. Taking the northern route allowed us more flexibility, surprisingly, and overall the least number of resources used. Best part, it's only 34 gold more expensive. Now, I'm not saying that there's an even more efficient path that substitutes one of the sulfur shelves that start with a fire bell and wind bloom, and I'm certainly not suggesting that anyone would be crazy enough to jump through those hoops and death traps that would come along with such a precise recipe. I mean, you'd have to have almost perfect precision through the whirlpool section, and then certainly you'd be testing your luck on multiple bone zones along the way. Not to mention you'd be too far south and would have to basically pixel perfect your way through the gap with the sulfur shelf and wind bloom combo, and if someone was skilled enough to do that, on the first try by the way, you'd actually be pretty safe to finish it off with a red mushroom into terraria, much like the previous recipe. Again, it'd be sadistic for me to even open that door for you to explore, and you'd have to be a bit of a masochist to even try to brew it yourself. But assuming you did it, you'd save 24 gold compared to the previous recipe, it'd cost no additional ingredients, and it would bring you within 10 gold of the basic ingredient only recipe. But yeah, like I said, that's all just a theory, and is probably impossible to do, so don't even try it. And so ends chapter 3. Only two chapters and eight potions to go. So far I've been following the order of recipes in the alchemist's path, but for this one I'd like to start with the easiest one and move on from there. Therefore, first up is the potion of rich harvest. We'll do two recipes for this one, a basic ingredient one, and then one that tries to use as few resources as possible. Since it's due east from the start point, the variations on this only really come down to whether you want to conserve gold or resources. So there's not much to say about this one other than to use water bloom if you want to save money, and Tangleweed if you want to save resources. Let's brew up that water bloom heavy one first, and then you'll see what I mean. First, start with a green mushroom, grinding it to the far right edge. You can sub in a terraria here if you want a fully basic recipe, but for the purposes of comparing it to the next one, I'll keep the mushroom in this one. After this, fully grind water blooms until you get to the bone zone beside the sleep note. You could have sacrificed a little distance on each of the water blooms to clear this, but it's much easier to just throw a lumpy beet into the mix and correct upwards with that. Fully grind the beet, and you'll be clear of the bones, no problem. After that, it's just water bloom, water bloom, and more water bloom. Fully grind each one, and add it to the pot, then stir your way through the entire path, slowing down at the end, and using water there where necessary. Total vendor cost? 152 gold and 7 ingredients. Not a terrible recipe compared to some of the ones in chapter 3, and it really shows off how expensive north and west travel can be. Now like I said, if you're only going east, the most efficient ingredient for traveling will always be tangleweed. So let's brew a similar recipe, but we'll slot in tangleweed where it makes sense. So, uh, we're just gonna slot it in everywhere. We'll start with the same green mushroom as before, grinding to the right edge. After that, grind one tangleweed to completion, and follow it up with a tangleweed just to the top of the circle in its path. Follow this up with another tangleweed, again just to the top of the circle, and then a fully ground tangleweed to finish. Stir through the path, using water at the end to help line up the tier 3 potion of rich harvest. Finish the swirl at the end, and pull it back just the same as the previous one to collect any experience books you missed. Total vendor cost? 172 gold and 5 ingredients, which means you save 2 ingredients for the cost of 20 extra gold. Definitely worth in my opinion. These are the two extremes, where we settle for resource efficiency or gold efficiency. But everything in between still exists. Missing a couple tangleweed? Try throwing in a nice fruit or water bloom. No lumpy beets? Shadow Chanterelle's got your back. Sure, it'll cost more, 
but there's so much more room for experimentation in between these two extremes. I'd recommend saving both of these recipes if you have the pages for it, and if not, save the water bloom one because it's a little bit more complicated so it's best to keep that one over the other. Stone potion is a recipe that I accidentally made while looking for another potion. I honestly don't know why it's a chapter 4 recipe, but here we are. This recipe is extraordinarily simple, so we'll be spending maximum 2 minutes on the recipes for this one. Let's say you've got only basic ingredients. Here's what you'll do. First, fully grind a fire bell. This will account for most of our western movement for this potion. After that, and I kid you not, you're going to throw 5 terraria into the pot, at varying grind levels. Grind the first two to completion, and then for each terraria after that, grind to the left edge and as close to the bottom of the path as you can. For the final terraria, grind all the way so that you can collect some of the experience books below the stone skin node. Stir and use water where appropriate, and that's... that's it. Total vendor cost? 80 gold and 6 ingredients. Terraria is literally the cheapest ingredient in the game, so you can spam it even when it's not an efficient use of the resource. It's still more optimal than any other option. But let's say you're out of Firebell and low on Terraria. What options do you have then? Let's first replace the first Firebell with a thorn stick ground to its southernmost point. Next, and I bet you can guess what I'm going to say, add Terraria. The only difference between the last recipe and this one will be that three Terraria instead of two will follow the pattern of grinding to the leftmost side and as far south as you can go. For the final Terraria, grind to completion so that you can collect the experience books, and stir and use water at the end to correct your path, and you're done. Total vendor cost is 80 gold, same cost as the previous one, but it uses 5 ingredients instead of 6. As far as I'm aware, this is the most optimal recipe for stone skin. But retro, what if you don't have fire bells or thorn sticks? Well, just give up then. You've got way more problems than being able to make a stone skin potion if you're completely out of those two things. You can substitute for other things, but the cost is going to skyrocket as soon as you deviate from this build. Based off of what I said for stone skin, you can probably guess what I'm going to say about Slowdown. It's basically the same as Stone Skin, except, you know, more Terraria. Let's start with the basic ingredient recipe, and then we'll augment where we can to use less ingredients. We'll start with a Water Bloom, grinding just enough distance out of it to clear the bones below with Terraria. Terraria has a pretty tight horizontal spread, so we don't need a lot of Water Bloom grinding to clear the bones. After that, Terraria, Terraria, and more Terraria. Again, the ingredients for this recipe are stupid cheap. So as long as you grind it past about 60% for each of the terraria, it's more cost effective to inefficiently burn one terraria than to switch to a firebell for the westward movement. Fully grind all the terraria until the second to last one, which you'll grind to the left bottom edge. After this one, add one more terraria and stir until you're below the potion node. From here, alternate between stirring and water to line up the potion inside the node and claim the tier 3. Finish stirring to grab a bit more experience and then water it back to collect some more. Total vendor cost? 88 gold and 7 ingredients. Pretty decent recipe, though I did see one spot where an improvement could be made. Instead of that water bloom at the start, let's throw an unground goblin shroom into the pot. After that, fully grind everything, same as before, until the second last, same as before. It's essentially the same potion, and just as foolproof. We grind everything until the end completely, so there's no way to mess up on the bones, so you can just trust in the recipe and stir. At the end, use a combination of water and stirring to line up the tier 3, slam those bellows, and then stir to collect any remaining southern books. Water it back just like before, and finish the potion. Total vendor cost, 80 gold and 6 ingredients, making it cheaper and more compact than the previous one. You can further compact it with thorn sticks and brown mushrooms, but this balloons the price by a lot, so I'm not going to showcase those here. Given the simplicity of these two recipes, I'd recommend just committing them to memory and saving those two recipe pages for other recipes. They're 100% foolproof until the end, so if you're low on enchanted paper, this is the one I'd get rid of. If you've been watching my potion craft series, you know there's a special place in my heart for the libido potion. It's a pretty fun potion to make, and it's become a channel joke after I spent 20 ingredients trying to make it. So let's do two recipes for this one. One with basic ingredients, and one where we try and min-max it a little bit. For both, I'll assume that the top entry point is the best option because it has that huge whirlpool that we can take advantage of, and we won't have any wasted south movement, which we would have if we take the bottom path. For the basic ingredient only potion, we'll start with a whole lot of firebell, grinding a lot of them so they trend slightly upwards so that we can clear that top nib of the western graveyard. Just keep throwing resources in until you pass the graveyard and are lined up with the whirlpool. In total, it'll take 5 firebells to make it to the whirlpool, and if done correctly, you should reach the top of the whirlpool. If it lights up like this, you're good to go and you can move on to the next step. 
Now in general, west distance is much more expensive compared to south distance, so we'll pump the bellows until we get to the west edge of the whirlpool. For this part I like to pre-grind and add what I think I'll need so that I can have a guide to the libido potion as I'm working the bellows. Add two fully ground firebell and two fully ground terraria to the pot, and then start pumping the bellows until you clear the boneyard, all the while also lining up that potion node at the end of the journey. This one relies a lot on technical skill, but you should be able to get it done with these ingredients. Total vendor cost, 164 gold and 9 ingredients. But let's not use that many firebells in a recipe. It's kind of rough on the stock levels, especially if you get multiple libido potion requests in a day. We can swap some of them out to spread the ingredient consumption across multiple ingredients. For starters, let's swap out that starter firebell for a red mushroom and a lava root. The red mushroom can be ground completely, but the lava root will require a little bit more of a delicate grind. We'll be scraping the bones ahead, so try and keep this in mind as we continue through this recipe. For the lava root, we want to avoid going too far north, or else we'll have to add more resources to get into the whirlpool. So I go with a bit of a risky grind here. Next, I throw in a fully ground firebell. This is the make or break part of the recipe, so it's best to stir now just in case it fails. We do manage to get to the other side without dying, but leaving the bones is imperative at this point, so a fully ground red mushroom is the best option. Pump the bellows to rotate the circle, and stop at the southwest edge. After that, our best option is a thorn stick into terraria, so we'll do that. There might be a min-max recipe that lets you save one ingredient here, but I've already risked my life three times through this potion, so that's enough for me. You can then finish by collecting the surrounding experience, and you're good to go. Total vendor cost, 186 gold and 6 ingredients. For the distance traveled, this is a pretty compact recipe. You'd be hard pressed to make a 5 ingredient version of this without using crystals. I'd recommend saving this recipe over the other one, given that the other one is simple enough to make and much less technical compared to this one. Our final potion for chapter 4 is Potion of Hallucinations. Now this one actually lines up almost perfectly on the grid system that the basic ingredients follow, so it's definitely possible to complete this potion without using anything other than Wind Bloom and Water Bloom. To do this, you'd start similarly to how you'd make a mana potion. Fully ground Wind Bloom, then a Water Bloom, into two more fully ground wind bloom. This will get us up and into the whirlpool, with a lot of distance to track after we do the whirl. Your exit point from this whirlpool will be the northeast corner. After this, grind a water bloom about 75% of the way, stopping at the top of its peak. Next, add a wind bloom in without grinding it, followed by two fully ground water bloom. This will get you to the edge of the whirlpool, which you can then try and use, but for my testing, it's just out of range from the node if you're just using basic ingredients. You'll likely need to add one more ingredient here, probably a wind bloom. In total, the vendor cost for this recipe is 200 gold, though it can likely be reduced slightly with better planning. Now a better option in general is to use the fact that we're mostly traveling through open space, so we can use the ingredients that offer more movement at the expense of volatility. Let's start instead with a Witch Mushroom instead of Wind Bloom Water Bloom combo. Grind that fully and add it to the cauldron. After that, we'll add a fully ground Wind Bloom to get us into the Whirlpool, followed by a fully ground Witch Mushroom. Stir until you get to the edge of the whirlpool, and exit again at the northeast edge of the whirlpool. A shadow chanterelle and a bit of water to correct their course is the next thing to add, grinding it fully and pulling it back with water like this to avoid dying on the bones. Now you're lined up with the gap between the bones, so a fully ground water bloom is next, followed by a whirl in the whirlpool. To finish, we can use the wonky path of a lumpy beat to reach the goal, and then swirl around a bit to collect the experience. Total vendor cost, 220 gold and 6 ingredients. For 20 extra gold, we save 4 ingredients off the previous recipe, so I'd recommend this one over the first. Witch mushrooms are a little difficult to find though, so be prepared to freehand your way through the gap with some water bloom and wind bloom. One final note, there's a lot of variations available for this potion because of the openness of the northeast. Yes, you almost exclusively have to use water bloom into lumpy beet for the best ending, but up until that point you can use wind bloom, thunder thistle, witch mushrooms, lumpy beets, shadow chanterelle, maybe a cheeky ice fruit in there somewhere. Really, it's all about assessing what you have available to you, and then reacting to the situation as it unfolds. Kind of a cop-out, I know, but that's the hallucination potion for you. There's only three potions in Chapter 5, but they're very difficult to get to and don't provide a lot of leeway in either direction. The first potion in the list is Potion of Levitation. Much like the Charm Potion, there's not much in terms of choice for ingredients for this one, because we still have to fit through that tiny gap like we had to for the Charm Potion, so the start of this recipe is exactly the same. We'll start with an augmented version of our basic ingredient only recipe for Potion of Lightning, since it's on the way to the Charm Potion. Add one unground Firebell to the Cauldron, followed by two fully ground Wind Bloom. We'll need one more ground Wind Bloom, because we're not going to the Lightning Potion. 
Grind that and add it to the cauldron and stir. That's our augmented lightning recipe, and the rest is pretty simple. Add in two wind bloom fully ground, which leads you in line with the horizontal bone zone path. Fully ground a water bloom to navigate the tight corridor, and from this location, there's lots of options for you to use other than wind bloom. So keep that in mind that a shadow chanterelle, lumpy beet, or even a witch mushroom or thunder thistle would be good here. But since this is a basic ingredient only recipe, we have to burn an extra water bloom to move a bit farther east, then wastefully throw in some wind blooms and fire bells as well. Stir all the way through the path you've made up until you reach the fire bell at the end. Here it's best to preemptively use some water to move down so you can avoid the bones a little bit. Alternate between water and stirring to line things up. From this point, water moves you directly down, so you just have to worry about being directly above the levitation node. Once you're on top of it, fire the bellows and claim your tier 3 levitation potion. As always, use up any remaining stir power you have to collect the experience books. And that's it! Total vendor cost, 260 gold and 12 ingredients. The only changes I'd make to this would be to swap the fire bell and wind bloom with a sulfur shelf, and then clear the horizontal bone corridor with a tangle weed. Outside of that, we're super restricted on our ingredient use for this potion. Now there is one important thing to note before I move on, because I know people are going to ask about it. Retro, why not just use a cloud crystal to jump over the bones? On paper, it makes sense. In practice, not so much. The problem lies in how the order of operations happens during the crystal activation. By my understanding, the act of disappearing is considered movement, so you need a good amount of potion health left to jump from within the bones, and you'll need more to exit any bones on the other side. Let's quickly swap to another clip of me testing this out. Here, I position myself in the bones and grind the crystal so that I'll still be in the bones on the other side, similar to what you'd have to do for the levitation jump. Watch the health level during this jump. The game has no issue with letting you travel from one bone to another, but it will definitely cost you health. So back to our levitation potion. Does this affect us up here? Yes, certainly so. In this clip, I'm slowly moving the potion bottle further and further down into the bones, slowly losing health along the way. My goal is to jump straight out of the bones with the Earth Pyrite, as I know the distances traveled by all the crystals are exactly the same, just in different directions. Therefore, if I can travel directly south and make the teleport and survive, then I can definitely line up a very efficient potion from the south end, which is basically a necessity if I'm spending 240 gold on a cloud crystal. So what happens when I use the Earth Pyrite? Boom. The potion fails immediately, indicating to me that it takes too much health to make the jump properly. And trust me, I tried. And tried. And tried and tried and tried and tried and again. I tried so many times, I started adding an attempt counter to the screen to help me track the different builds and attempts. In all my testing, I couldn't find a recipe that I could endorse as both A, easy enough to explain and show how to replicate, and B, gold efficient enough to warrant the increasing cost. If you do know of a recipe that incorporates the cloud crystal along the midline of the map, Please let me know in the comments, but otherwise I don't recommend wasting cloud crystals here. It's much better just to stockpile them for any new potions that require some extensive and difficult northern travel. The invisibility potion is tucked away at the northeast edge of the map, and it's deceptively difficult to optimize a recipe for it because of the offset entryway. I'll be the first to admit that I failed this potion many many times trying to figure out what recipes didn't suck. There's a stupid amount of precision involved in this one, so hold on to your hats prepare for a step-by-step -step guide that you never, ever deviate from. For this one, I found that creating the entire potion path at the start was the best way for me to visualize what I needed to do next, and it's also imperative to line up properly at the end because we'll be using the whirlpool mechanics for this one. First, grind a wind bloom all the way, followed by a water bloom to its topmost peak. The goal is to align the traveling X so that it's right below the southern edge of the whirlpool. That way, we can get there with the next wind bloom that we'll be grinding. After this water bloom, all of our ingredients except one will be fully ground, so don't worry about precision outside of that one. Start with grinding two wind bloom fully, then a water bloom fully. The next wind bloom you'll be grinding is extremely precise, so try and get it as close to the location in the video as possible. My guide was to have the X sit directly between those two long bones, if that makes sense. In general though, just pick something touching the X or close to the X in the photo, and use that as your guide. After that, the potion is almost done. Add two more fully ground wind bloom to the cauldron, and it's going to look a little off because, well, it is. It's off by about 3 eighths of a whirlpool rotation to be precise, and you have to be precise about it. So pump the bellows very slowly once you get into the whirlpool. Our goal is to rotate the entire path so that our line is exactly on top of the guiding line that the game provides us leading back to the start from the levitation node. There's almost no room for deviation in this one, so be very slow and very methodical. Once you have them lined up like this, then you're good to stir it all the way to the node, slowing down once you get there. There won't be much of an opportunity for water in this, so if you mess up, you're done. So be very, very patient here. Total vendor cost, 168 gold and 8 ingredients. If anybody can find a potion cheaper than this one, let me know, but I don't think there's any way to optimize this any further for gold efficiency. 
Now that that's out of the way, let's remove the restriction of just basic ingredients and try some other stuff. From our investigation into the bounce potion, I know that we can swap out the starting wind bloom and water bloom with a shadow chanterelle, so let's start with that one. Grind it to the apex of the curve. Once that's done, add a fully ground wind bloom, just like the other recipe. This will get us into the whirlpool, at which point we can start working on the post whirl part of the recipe. Before we swirl, I want to add a witch mushroom as a guide for us to follow. So we'll fully grind that and start pumping the bellows. The best spot to exit with a witch mushroom seems to be the northeast edge, so we'll stir our way out of it from there. Now I've got a couple options on what to use next, but I do have a bit of a bias for lumpy beets, so I'll use that here. If you don't have any of those left, a shadow chanterelle ground close to the peak works as well. After that, add two fully ground wind bloom and stir. If you follow this recipe, you'll reach a point where you'll be moving only horizontal on the final wind bloom. So use that to your advantage as you try and line things up. Since you're moving only horizontal with your stirring, use the water to pull the potion bottle in line with the potion node in the vertical direction. Once it's in line, you can continue stirring and shift left into it. Total vendor cost, 200 gold and six ingredients. Personally, I'd save this recipe and brew the basic one if you can't manage it otherwise. Money tends to not be the limiting factor in the game once you get to this point. It's ingredients. So using less is almost always best. And finally, we make it to Potion of Necromancy. I've got two recipes for this one, but I really want to drive home how hard it is to get to this Necromancy Potion node if you don't have the crystals to jump with. The Spiral of Death consumes so many resources, and it really comes down to intuition, game knowledge, and a constant understanding of where you are in relation to the starting point. The good news for this potion is that it's mostly south and east movement, so it's on the cheaper side compared to if it was in the top left corner. If you have a free potion recipe page available, I'd recommend saving a recipe that relies solely on basic ingredients like this one, but again, it's mostly just freehand work. What I did focus on for this recipe was finding a way to standardize getting into the spiral itself, so I'll show that off now. Start with a full grind water bloom, followed by six full grind terraria. Our main goal is to get down to the thinnest part of the bones, so that we can get through them without, well, boning ourselves. Now you see that we do touch the edge of this whirlpool, and stopping a little higher would probably lead to less issues, but I really wanted to make a foolproof recipe so that anyone can get into the boneyard spiral itself. By grinding to the max on each ingredient, I created a recipe that is, up until this point, foolproof. After the six terrarias, add a fully ground water bloom, and you'll be inside the spiral. Total cost to enter is 104 gold and 8 ingredients, and that's just to get into the money burning spiral part. Now I'll speed this part up and talk over it but you can see that it's extremely difficult to move within the spiral, to the point where it's almost impossible to use anything other than just basic ingredients. I couldn't even use non-basic ingredients if I wanted to, because there's just not enough room to move. More importantly, if you ever don't have one of those non-basic ingredients, you can't reuse this recipe. So again, it's just much better to burn more basic ingredients than try and use a non-basic one. The spiral will really test your knowledge and skill of this game, which is pretty cool given that it's the final recipe that they want you to complete. There's whirlpools in here, you have to have a general understanding of how long you can stay in the bones. You have to preemptively think about your next ingredient and correct for it along the way. It's really just a great end game recipe. Again, for the most part, you'll have to freehand it. But if you follow this recipe closely, your total vendor cost will be around 281 gold and somewhere in the ballpark of 22 resources used, which is absolutely insane and extremely gold and resource inefficient. Not to mention that it took over five minutes for me to brew this. That's five minutes where if you make one mistake, it might cost you upwards of 300 gold. The only saving grace to this particular recipe is that it uses only basic ingredients, so your enchanted garden will certainly reduce the vendor cost to make this by a lot. If you have an open recipe page, I'd recommend doing this one once and saving it forever. Now I've already kind of hinted at this, but there's definitely a much more streamlined and optimized recipe, so let's back this up and go for a much more optimized one. For this one we'll start with the same setup, because water bloom and terraria are the cheapest resources available, so using them where we can will keep costs down so that we can spend more later. If you're at a point where money is no object to you, then replace this with whatever resource efficient ingredient you want. It could be tangleweed, green mushroom, goblin shroom, anything that tracks southeast is good here. For this version though, we're using one water bloom and three terraria, all fully ground. Now we're going to want to line ourselves up with the top path of the inside spiral, so a mushroom is next, fully ground. This will get us right to the edge of the bones and almost perfectly in line with that top spiral path. This is my preferred method of entry for the necromancy potion, because it's pretty simple to do and more or less foolproof. Next, pull out one of those lovely, lovely frost sapphires and grind that up 100% of the way. And as you do, listen closely and you'll hear the sounds of 160 gold vanishing in an instant. Yep, that's right, we're spending over half of the last potion's vendor cost in one ingredient. So enjoy it! 
There's only three other ingredients in the game currently that cost more than this, so this is definitely something special. Next up, we just need a little bit of east movement, so let's go back to cost saving mode and throw in a water bloom. Keep in mind here that using water at this point will pull you northwest, so being a little too far east is much better than being a little too far west. For me, after staring very intently at the earth pyrite path, I decided that grinding about halfway up the slope was the best. The final ingredient is earth pyrite, and while this plays out, I'll answer a question you'll probably ask. Retro. Earth Pirate is 40 gold cheaper than a Frost Sapphire. Why not just use two of it and come in from the north? Well, the selling feature of teleportation that these crystals boast has an implicit downside to it. The transport is instant, which means that you need to be very precise when you're using it. That's a lot of effort, and I'd probably end up burning a Terraria in the process to line things up, maybe a Water Bloom. There's so many things that could go wrong with a double teleportation setup. So yes, is it less efficient to come in from the west side and teleport in with a Frost Sapphire? Yes, very much so. But the benefit is that you have the opportunity to line yourself up between the teleports using a water bloom. Two different crystals with an intermediate ingredient means less precision, which I prefer much more in this case because enchanted paper is always in short supply and I might not be able to store the double earth pyrite recipe, especially because the other recipe I just showed will probably be taking up one page. Anyways, discussion aside, this recipe has a total vendor cost of 376 gold and only eight ingredients used which is much, much, much more resource efficient than the 22 resources used for traveling all the way around the spiral, but it costs 95 gold more, so it's not something to sneeze at if you're low on gold. Personally, I think spending 95 gold is worth the 14 ingredients saved, because that means that I can then put those 14 ingredients into three other potions and make money off that, which overall should make me more than 95 gold, so it's just generally better to use the crystals here. And that's it a guide on how to brew every potion currently in the game from multiple perspectives and at multiple points in the game. By my count, that's 60 different potion variations discussed in this video, so please consider throwing a like and subscribe for the channel and the algorithm, and please 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 leave a comment if you know a more efficient recipe. This video is going to be a part of a set of videos, both of which are diving into the brewing mechanics for this game. If you want a much deeper dive into how these recipes are generated, the maths, and a little bit of an attempt to reverse engineer the devs' decisions, Check out that video once it's released. I'll also mention in passing that at the time of recording, the game is only in patch version 0.4.5, so this game is still very early in development. There's definitely going to be some changes in recipes moving forward, and as more potions and ingredients are added, there will have to be more updates, all of which will be covered on this channel. If you like the content, check out the Potion Craft series that we've been doing on this channel as well. We're less than 10 episodes in, so now is the best time to catch up and add it to your weekly rotation. Pass that, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.